Hello Clubbies, welcome to the September Club Projects. As you can see here, we have more than usual, and that's because September typically is a different format. So what we're doing is you get to choose three of these six projects. We are bouncing off of the paper pumpkin kit that came out in September with a super cute stamp set. And what I've done is I've taken each one of the projects that came in and uh, some stayed kind of the same and some of them have been completely changed. So this, typically this club we do three different videos, you know, matching the three different projects. But this time the projects are so fast that I didn't think it would warrant uh, breaking them up into like two minute videos. I don't know if they'd be two minutes, but they'd be really short. So we're doing a little different format uh, than we normally do. So let me show you a quick synopsis of what's going on, and then we'll walk through each project. And so just as a, a note here, uh, like this particular project is right from the paper pumpkin and I'll make sure I link the video on how to do that. So I won't be showing how to actually make the box because you can see that in the video, but I definitely be showing you how to make the coordinating card. Um, if it, the paper pumpkin has been changed at all like this one, then I'll show you how I changed it, but I'll still focus mostly on the card because that obviously is not in the paper pumpkin video because I'm the one who made them. Um, and uh, show you how you know, I changed this from all the paper pumpkins were boxes and then now this is a bag. So I'll go over that. But again, the projects are super easy and the reason being is a lot of times, when we, especially when we're doing a card or a box or something that we're sending out for a particular holiday, usually we send more than one. So it's nice to have uh, something easy that you can repeat super fast uh, and get a lot done kind of like an assembly line type of deal. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with our little spider one first. I'm not super fan of spiders but I'll, I'm okay with them if they're paper. <laughs> so, so this is the original paper pumpkin one. It's just like a little matchbox and it's uh, as you can see this is you can see through so it's a windowed one. That looks like a web. Pretty cool. It was very easy to put together. So you definitely could make a bunch of these. So if you're someone that has kids in school or you're a teacher and you like to give these sort of things out for the holidays, you know, Halloween, Valentine's Day, whatever, um, Paper Pumpkin is great even if you only subscribe to just those months so you can get a few of the kits. And typically it's always a month in advance. So like all the Halloween comes out in September. January would be all the Valentines. In October and November is going to be holiday cards for the Christmas season, holiday season. So both those kits actually are all holiday cards. So you get two kits. I think you end up with like what, like 18, 20 cards, somewhere in there where you end up with a lot of cards and they're usually super cute. So just something to keep in mind if you're not a Paper Pumpkin sub subscriber yet. Uh, I, I think they've been knocking it out of the park. Uh, pretty much every single month and if you don't like the cards that are made with paper pumpkin there is so many ideas you could get lost for hours on pinterest and forums looking at everyone's alternative paper pumpkin projects and you even get to see three today obviously because that's what we're doing for our club in september and all these layouts are so easy and simple you could definitely uh change them up uh, and, and adapt them to whatever project or things that you have on hand, I think it would be super easy. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. If you're not making the box, this is the card. And what I did was, uh, let me show you what the card or the web piece looks like. It comes like this, and it's intended to fold around this little matchbox. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to cut these pieces off we can always use them for something else especially these little bars here could be used for like greeting pieces down the road even this piece you could banner trim the ends or whatever I mean it, there's a way to be creative and use up every single piece and it doesn't have to go to waste at all <laughs> so all right and then we have our pumpkin pie in the background and there's one or two ways that you could make this you could either cut the box down if you don't want to use your own cardstock, or you can just cut cardstock down. These two pieces are right from the paper pumpkin. And then also, let's see if I can find it in my box here. Yes, there it is. Of course, 
I started with a project that's at the very bottom of my my supply box. Wouldn't you know? And then this is just another box from the paper pumpkin, but I've cut it down into strips. And I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's score marks here. But when you turn it over with the pattern, you can't even see the score marks. So don't be afraid to use the box as if it were just regular designer series paper. I mean, you totally could. All right. We also have some designer series paper I got from the catalog, from the holiday mini catalog. And our card base is going to be a basic gray. And all the supplies are, will be listed out next to this video so you can see exactly what you need. And I'll make sure I separate them out per project so you know what you need the basic gray for, what you need the DSP for. That way you're not hunting and pecking through it if you only want to make one of the cards for the entire thing. So. I folded my card. This has already been cut, and really all I need to do now is just cut this piece out. So I'm going to get my paper cutter. I'm not a very straight cutter, so I prefer to use my paper cutter. And all I'm going to do is follow the score lines that are on either side. And I'm going to line those score lines up with my groove on my paper cutter. Hopefully I'm not out of the shot here. And if you're going to cut the Just cut right on the top of it, it should be fine. If it bows up a little bit or if you see a little bit of an edge, just take your bone folder and just kind of run it along the edge and that should flatten it out really well. The other thing is, is if you're cutting this one, it's easier to flip this over and see the score marks on the white side than this side. I was trying to do it from this side and I was like, I can't see the score marks. I think my eyes are just getting old. Okay. So we're we'll just put these off to the side. We don't need those. I have gathered all my supplies now. I've got my greeting that we're going to need. Uh, the paper pumpkin came with a small spot of the orchid oasis, but we're just going to go ahead and use our pads. It's easier. And I went ahead and gathered my little accent pieces here, my greeting piece that go right here. And I will make sure I measure these and put them in the supply list. That way, if you don't have the paper pumpkin kit, but you want to repeat this as close as possible, you'll know what size to cut these. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is let's build our art piece. Anything like this on the front of a card, this would be considered, considered your focal point or your art piece. I oftentimes times call it your art piece because it's the one that's got the most artistic effort put into it, I guess you could say. <laughs> Alright, so you have a couple choices here. You could use glue dots or you could use uh, liquid glue. Um, we're going to keep life easy on the in the slaw lane here, as my dad would say. It's an old song. If you remember it, comment below and tell me if you remember that song. Okay. Preferably putting the glue dots on the correct side. Let's see if I can carefully peel that off. And you can kind of tell what side is the right side. I think I just put it back on the wrong side. Um, actually, I'm looking at this and you could make the web going any direction that you want. I mean, I think I'll keep it going uh, in the up, coming from the upper left, but I'm looking at this, and they did a good job. It really can't even, you can't even tell um, where the proper, whether there's a, a right side or a wrong side, I guess, but, which is good, because if you want to make some going one way or some going the other way, you most certainly could do that. Now this is for the card. I don't know if it would be the same for the box because once you fold it, there's probably only one way it goes. So just keep that in mind. So I just put glue dots in my four corners. You know, let's, let's keep it easy, right? And I'm flipping it up with my glue dots along the top and I'm going to make sure that my card stock fits behind it and kind of stays hidden. You get a little play if you push it a little, but I don't want any of the cardstock showing in the front. Okay, so now that is done. The next thing we need to do is add some tape. You can do glue dots again if you like in the back of here. This is just going to go, and it barely, like barely covers the sides here. And you want it about the middle because our little spider needs to go to the bottom here. Again, I'm going to use a glue dot. Let's keep things easy and quick. And he, I want him to overlap the bottom to the bottom edge here, just a little bit. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp our greeting. Now if you're using the paper pumpkin greeting pieces, 
they do have a little bit of a shiny surface on them, so it might take an extra minute to dry. I'm going to stamp this, but I'm going to try really hard not to get my head in the shot. See if I can do that. I'm not even wearing my glasses, which is probably a bad idea. If it's not straight, be kind. <laughs> Actually, right, it's off to the side. So we're going to roll with it. And again, you can use glue dots, you can use dimensionals, it's kind of up to you. I think on the box I used dimensionals, but on the card I didn't. And I have a little bit of tape that decided to... I'm using the Seal Plus, which is a little different than the regular Seal. It comes out in these little strips of tape instead of just one long thing. So we'll have to... We are ready to uh, amount this to the card, but before we do that, let's get the card base ready to go. And that is super simple too. One thing about this white and black cardstock that's in the Holiday Mini, if you don't want to leave it white and black, you can definitely take a brayer or your blending brushes, and you're going to do whatever color you want on here. So if I wanted, I could blend out some Orchid Oasis on here and now make it purple and black, which I think would look pretty cool actually. But we're trying to keep these quick, so up to you. <laughs> you can always change it up if you want to. Okay, same thing. We're just going to take our band here. This goes about three-fourths of the way down or fourths of the way up, however you want to look at it. And then I did want to put dimensionals in the back in here. And when I say dimensionals, a.k.a. I'm actually going to use one of our home adhesive sheets. Because I just don't want to stick down eight bazillion dimensionals, and I have some scraps here. We'll pull this. This is just going to go a little bit off to the right. And then one thing I did not do uh, with this one uh, was add uh, embellishments, which you definitely could do. And those came in the paper pumpkin, but you could use matte dots, anything that you think would look good, little orange ones. Uh, we're just going to use these little stars. And I was just conserving on them to make sure we had enough for club because I can't just order these stars because they're part of paper pumpkin. So I'm just going a little nuts here with the stars. But anyway, so then you'll want to embellish it and you should be done. Of course, feel free if you like string, you could add string somewhere on here. And that is the Happy Halloween Spider card. And here's the little box that goes with it. Let's move on to our trick-or-treat card or box. The original uh, paper pumpkin was again a matchbook, match matchbox, where the box slid in and out, but I wanted to change it up a little bit, so I had these little bags left over from probably another paper pumpkin. I had a bunch left over, and so I'm going to actually put uh, the bag inside here, I have it just filled with cotton because I didn't have any candy on hand. I actually don't eat candy. <laughs> I can't. So I do miss it though. I'm not going to lie. Um, so you can fill this with candy and then it just adds an alternative. So my recommendation is uh, stamp your box first with the little bats, same Orchid uh, Oasis color. And then on the back side here, Place a little tear tape or something on the inside of this box and then stick your bag to it with the bottom flush with the bottom of the box um, while it's empty. And then finish doing everything you do and then just stick your hand in here, open it up, fill it with the candy and then you can tie it off. I do recommend that if you're going to tie this off to make it easier because it is really short because I'm using a small bag, um, you know those little uh, clear rubber bands they use for little girls hair to do little braids and things like that put that around the bag first and then tie your string around it it'll make it a lot easier and you can buy those boxes with those little bands I think this comes with like a hundred of them or something in this little box so I'm just a little idea there so as far as the card goes what we're going to do for that um, I just took normally what would have been the box cover Again, looks like the one in the last project, looks like this. And what I did was just cut these little panels out and left the other ones off. Those could be used for greeting pieces down the road. 
So it's just this little this little piece here and this little piece here. You only need the one. So you could get two out of this. You could get quite a bit actually. So there's only a little bit of stamping that we need to do to this. And then of course we have our little scallop piece. This has been printed, but at home if you don't have this, you could do definitely a white circle and then do a scallop black circle layered underneath it and it would look pretty much the same. So just saying. So let's grab our bats. I think they're right here on the edge of our block. We'll just put them on the edge of the block there. We'll be really careful. And we're just going to grab some of this orchid oasis. And we only need to stamp twice. I mean, I guess you could stamp more if you wanted to. But, I mean, if you're making a bazillion of these, you really have to be cognizant of what, all the steps. That is one of my struggles. I tell you, I find a card idea, I fall in love with it, and I start making it, and I don't realize, oh dear. This is a lot of steps when you times and times, you know, 80 cards or however many that you're making. It's kind of crazy. Okay, so we need our trick or treat. And it's that. Grab our color. And then uh, the trick to find the treat and getting this to really be a good bold stamp is enough pressing super hard. You just got firm pressure on it. And then give the paper a chance to kind of soak up that ink. That's really the trick to it. And you'll have a nice bold image. And you have less ink on here, so you're actually wasting less ink. Just a thought. Okay, so we're going to put dimensionals or you can do whatever you have on hand. I have, of course, some of these scraps I'm trying to use up from the foam adhesive sheets. Let's put this on the back here. And our art piece is done. So let's start moving on to our card base. This is just a basic black. So you might want to put like a white piece on the inside or get a white gel pen and white, write your message with a gel, white gel pen. If you're stamping a sentiment, you could emboss the sentiment in white and put that on the inside. That'd be something nice and different. We don't often do that. Okay, before I stick this on, I got to talking. We do need the tape on the back. And I'm going to take some of my little glimmer ribbon here. This is, of course, the Orchid Oasis. And I want it about a third of the way down. I'm just going to do kind of like a cheater wrap here. I'm going to stick this one. I'm going to go all the way around. Oops. I'll turn this over. And I'll press it down on my tape. And then I'm going to trim it off. And then sometimes when you have a thinner ribbon, but you need it to be more of a thicker presence on the front, double or triple the, the lines you do across. It widens, the, it makes it, gives it a wider presence. And, but then you might be able to still use, like in this case, I really wanted to use this really pretty ribbon that's not very thick. And if it was all by its lonesome on this card, it might kind of get lost. But by doing a double strand of it, um, it widens it and I think it, it really helps it to pop out. So it's such a pretty ribbon, so pretty. All right, so now that that is done, and it's very, very thin. So we don't need to worry about doing dimensionals underneath there. It shouldn't get too wonky on us. So then we're going to take our art piece and put this right over the top. And our trick or treat is almost done. Again, if you want to, uh, you can add embellishments. I didn't to my original because I, like I said before, I was conserving on the embellishments for club to make sure you guys all had what you needed first, like a good teacher, make sure you have your needs met. And so just throw a couple on there and you should be good. And I do like to keep them in a the block, uh, just to make sure that they don't accidentally stick to things they shouldn't be stuck to. Keep them from peeling off when I don't want them to. So that is the trick or treat card and the box, whichever one you, you want to make or club or and maybe you're revisiting and remaking these next year so and this has all so far been done with the same uh, paper pumpkin stamp set so really great so all right now that we've known this one 
let's clean up and let's start on our last project. We are back and now we have the supplies gathered for our last project. Let's go over the paper pumpkin version. Again, this would have been a box with this being uh, the wrap around that uh, would have had the exact same look with the ghost and everything, but it would have just been wrapped around a box. So I've taken the wrap around. I guess I can show it to you. Here's the wrap around, which would normally look like this. You would just glue it and you'd have your ghost in the front. But I've actually cut this piece right here and you can get two to a strip here uh, and we're going to corner around some of it and then I have an extra piece of pumpkin pie here that I've cut with my uh, it's a scallop set I have it right here and I'll make sure I put it in the description scallop contours is what it's called I knew it was scallop something <laughs> um, and it is the two and a half by like three and seven eighths size scalp just measuring that on my mat down in the corner here so we've already die cut this to save a little time uh, oh and to finish up with it so I just we're gonna decorative the corners here and then I just put it in a little paper sack instead of the box just to give something different of course you could definitely if you have a paper pumpkin kit make the boxes but if you have some bags laying around like I did and you want to use them up this is definitely something you could do all right so moving on to the card pretty simple card uh let's go ahead and stamp the background first and this is just orchid oasis cardstock i did not fold ahead of time sometimes i do sometimes i don't of course we're taking the same orchid and i'm sharing blocks because when I was creating the card, that was too easy to get another block out. I'm just taking the spider web that's from the Paper Pumpkin stamp set that came out in September. So again, I think we only use one stamp that's from another set, and I'll go over that in a minute. Just randomly stamping. There's one right there. When you're ran quote unquote randomly stamping and you want your stuff to be relatively random looking but space, just imagine imaginary triangles between your images and if you keep your triangles even and offset just a little, then you should have kind of a random random look. Okay. Now that our base is done, let's start building our art piece. So like I said, we've already die cut this. So we have our ghost and our spider web. Um, and that was our tag that came. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that instead. And I have a trick to this. I, I did this one and you really can't tell too much unless you know, like are told. But the corner's off just a little bit. And when I was punching that, I was like, well, that's kind of weird. How do you make it to where it doesn't do that? So. You stick this in, there's these little guides on either side, and you just make sure the edges of your cardstock are right up like that. Always press in the middle. If you try to press on the edge, it won't work. you got to press down the middle. Okay, so now we have our first round. So normally, the habit would be to go in just like that. But we're going to flip it over on the back side. And again, making sure it's matched up with our guides. And now it matches on either side. At least it does better it looks like like this one looks like it was shoved off just a little bit to the side this one looks very even so same thing whatever side you start on is fine but you have to flip it over to get it even and I, I, I think a lot of this has to do with just trial and error um, but this definitely looks more even than when I did it originally so that's just a trick that you can try and see if, if you're finding out that yours is not very even on the shoulders here that could be it you may need to turn it over um, and then do it just an idea I could be wrong but there's no harm in trying so, all right we're gonna stick this right to our scallop and it does go all the way to edges on the left and right but that's okay we just really wanted some orange to peek through the top and the bottom okay so let's add our web here we'll put that right about there and our ghost goes on with 
dimensional. Or in this case, I'm using, up, still using up scraps <laughs> of my adhesive. So, this ghost is so cute. He doesn't look scary at all, which I'm okay with. I'm not into scary Halloween. I'm in, I'm into cutesy Halloween. Alright, so this is normally the tag. Apologize for the rumpling of the plastic. And what I did was is I took my one inch circle punch. It just barely fits, just barely. Um, but it's about one inch. And so instead of doing the bag greeting that says enjoy the spooky treat, well, it's a card. So unless you could leave that on there and just do the square, if you're getting a spooky treat with the card, but if you're not, then it kind of seems weird, I guess. So we're going to take um, our trick or treat uh, stamp here. This one was from a paper pumpkin, oh gracious, like years ago. I'd have to look it up on Search, Find, Create. Uh, if you look up paper pumpkin Halloween, it should pull up all the sets that we've had and this should show up there. Uh, but it's just the one with these skeletons and it's a really cute set, actually. Skeletons are kind of, the dancing skeletons are kind of cute. Alright, so we're going to do trick or treat instead. And I know I have a lot of ink on here. I've not cleaned it. That looks good. And then, of course, we're going to put dimensional on the back or some kind of foam something, in my case. Some kind of foam something. That's what you want to do. And then we're just going to put this kind of like that so it kind of connects all three of these. And now we can put it on the front. My uh, seal just loves to rip this paper. I think I'm either pressing too hard or not hard enough. So we're just going to put them here, just down the middle. I'll just make sure I don't put too much. Okay. Because this stuff's really sticky. So I'll put that down. And then that is our card. Of course, as with the other two cards, you can embellish it with the stars. So let's chuck some stars in there. If you're like me, you kind of need a, like a guidance. I often look like, where should I put stars? Of course, this is a card that's not on the internet, so I'm kind of winging it. So hopefully that's okay. So a couple big ones. And then we'll do a couple small ones. I'm going to do uneven numbers if you can. Odd numbers is always the best way to go. Let's put one right there. That's good. I don't want to go too crazy. And that is our little ghost one. I, it's hard for me to decide which card I like best because I think they all turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. So let's take a look at our cards again. Here is our cards. Here is the treat bag that went with that one. And this was the bag. We changed it over to a bag. Okay. And then the last one. We have our little spider box with our spider card. So we made a lot of them and really fast. Didn't take long at all. And they are they are pretty fun. Ooh, this one's upside down. They were pretty fun to make. Uh, I love it when, you know, even though I love doing avid cards where they're kind of detailed and things like that, I still like to do the quick and easy cards also, especially if I just need a quick creative fix, kind of a warm-up. It gets me warmed up, gets my creative mojo going, and then I'm ready to, to tackle even more stuff. So I hope you enjoyed Club for this month, and feel free to leave a comment below, and we'll see you soon.